Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. If you remember in the previous video, we fixed this bush boombox. So I, was, I had to pause there to use the term a bit lightly because it's, it's a kind of a boombox remake. Um, the problem with it, though, apart from its power supply, was now that we've fixed it up to use battery power, it's not powering the iPod port where I used to have a Bluetooth dongle. But to be honest, the dongle was really annoying. So I've ordered something else, which we're going to have a look at and hopefully fit. So this was on Amazon. It was about eight pounds or so, and I'll add a link down below if I remember, or just come and shout me on Discord and say, Andrew, where's the link? But basically it's called a dollar tech, and that is literally how it's spelt there, dollar tech, DZ. 1084 dollar tech bluetooth receive mod but yeah click the link if i've got one down below because um i'll get a penny for every time somebody purchases one of these via that link now it looked the most comprehensive it wasn't the cheapest it was quite expensive because you can normally get two for a five or a bluetooth gadgets but the quality of the board really swayed me in the picture it was a little bit bigger than a lot of them and the fact that look it actually comes with a real life genuine to goodness manual which is really cool so let's just have a quick look at it you've got a headphone socket which looks like it has ground left and right on there so i'm guessing that's output i don't think it's got a microphone input which for our needs is absolutely fine you have a nice clip based power connector so you don't need any tools necessary to operate that and a micro usb power supply so that's cool there's your antenna it has an antenna connector as well for an external one. It's, it's a, this is a very nice module. And then you have this, which uh, I've never seen that. This clearly is a, a port for, for covering covering your header ports there. But that's the, also the same thing, because you can see here left, ground, right, which is why they have one of these wires like you used to have in your PC case. But what's really nice too, they've got the other end. So that is basically like a full kit you could solder that onto your your board your vera board or whatever and get that going so my intention is to open up my radio and basically fit this inside so i don't have to think about bluetooth ever again but let's have that quick look through the manual seeing as it's one side's chinese and one side's english it shouldn't take us too long to have a, a quick scan through if the camera will grace us with focusing of course it will um, 5 to 35 volt input, that's a really nice voltage range. Bluetooth version 4.2. I thought it said 5 in the listing. I don't know. That probably doesn't matter for what we're doing. Full surface mount technology, wide of operating voltage, power supply reverse protection, dual audio output terminals. Yeah, that's the, the, the headphone style one and the wired, which is cool. Um, interesting enough, it doesn't have solder contacts for them. It's all just provided by the headers, so it's... Designed for more of an integrator than a hacker. Um, and then there's your whole whole business there about it, but you could see there. Onboard antenna, professional software, 50 ohm impedance control. Don't know about that. Bluetooth name, LQSCBT, supports memory connections. I guess it means it remembers, remembers who it connected to last. Quick flashing, waiting for connection, slow flashing, audio playing, remain on connected. Now I wonder if there's any sort of weird pairing thing, because that's sometimes the downfall of these, but there's nothing about that. Um, because sometimes, honestly, when you when you have devices where you have to hold down a button to pair them, that makes them really annoying for integration. And I have to say, I've been lucky with the last few gadgets like this. They seem to be kind of open, and they'll just accept who you know the first device who wants to try to connect to them if they're not connected to something else. So I think what remains for me is to open my radio and we'll see where we can stick it. I'm getting some serious deja vu here. The Bluetooth receiver paired my phone absolutely instantly. I've just connected it temporarily to some power from an external USB source. The main board here is running at 3V3, but there is a 5 volt permanent supply that's being regulated down from the 12 volts, so I might be able to make use of that to power this on when the backlight comes on, because I found a backlight uh, connection, so maybe we'll use the backlight to switch power onto this guy. But the main thing I want to do is tap into the iPod uh, section. I've noticed this is the audio section from the iPod, and then there's a bunch of other wires now. 
I'm hoping it doesn't have an iPod detect type circuit that keeps the amp quiet until it's detected one. So what I'm going to do in the meantime, I'm just going to try to cut into this cable here and I'm going to use a window splice so that we can try to hook our new device in without totally destroying it. And hopefully if we can hear crackle, snap, crackle, pop, there's a chance we don't have to mess too much and try to fool the, the gadget. But I notice when I touch these with my tweezers, I'm not hearing anything. So that's a little bit of a worry. But you might just be able to see down here that I've cut into that cable. And I was going to do a window splice on everything, but I obviously kind of half asked it. So I've connected my feed in, but I haven't connected the existing iPod feed. Bit of laziness and a bit of meh, you know. In fact, I'm just going to cut these because I was just trying to be honest with myself and I don't think I'm ever going to hook an iPod into this. It really is pointless. Now, um, there is uh, the need to have a detection signal when you're running an iPod in this, so it does have a detection. And I did notice a pin here that says DET, and I'm going to go for DET and ground. You want more with me, pal? More with me, And there you go, you could hear a bit of sound there. Um, and that's working pretty sweet. So I've got to decide again, am I just going to molest the cable here or molest the connector? I think let's just, let's just do all of our molestation on this end, shall we? And what we might find is because, and I'm going to double check this, audio ground and actual ground seem to be the same on this radio. So let's just check between here and here. Is it almost? I feel maybe I'm, no, no, wrong place. Oh yes, it is, there you go. So audio ground is the same. So if we take this detect signal here, which is this one. Again, I'm a little bit worried when I send everything in this radio sliding around because it is connected to the mains. And you can see down here, I've taken the shield and the connector ground. They're all they're all the same potential, but I could just hook it up. I should potentially, if I've got the right cable to ground, we should be hearing something. Unless, of course, I cut the wrong thing. So you can see and hear, hopefully, that uh, that connection there did actually work. Um, it does seem to have some sort of logic behind it. So as I was touching it, um, you had to hold it on for a few moments and then it picked it up. So that's good. So that means we have the audio side connected um, and it's now time to move on to the power side. I've made quite a lot of progress so I'd better show you what I've done before I bolt this all down. So the first things first you'll notice here is a tip one, two, one transistor. It's a Darlington pair transistor that's equivalent of two transistors in one. No special reason for using this over a MOSFET or any other transistor other than I just have a bunch of these. So that's absolutely fine. So what we do, we have the collector here. This wire is coming from that 5 volt regulator that's doing whatever it does. To be honest, I don't know if we're overdriving it or not, but it's okay, I think. And that's coming to the positive of our Bluetooth module here. And then the negative of the uh, Bluetooth module is going into the collector of the transistor here and then the emitter is bolted straight to chassis ground effectively and then we have the um, oh, I'm getting confused am I <laughs> the base the base I'm not getting confused the base here is coming off and it's actually connected to this board over here on the on the PCB but that pin actually matches up with this backlight control so that backlight control is flicking on and off now I was thinking about this because this board here actually is a 5 to 35 volts we could just as easily desolder that and put that on our 12 volt in and hmm I'm wondering that could be a better move before I power it up and in fact let me just do that now because you know let's give the onboard electronics here on the 5 volt supply the benefit of the doubt yeah and that way we'll make sure we're not getting any noise or anything coming in on them so I'm moving that wire to here just where we've got that 12 volts coming in and I'm gonna just tweak it a little bit um, 
I think this chassis is live. Got to be careful. That power rail over there, the, the mains and stuff, is actually live. But I'm just going to tack this down there onto those 12 volt pins. That's a good one. That's a good one. So now I'm going to reach around the front here, top right corner, and push that power button. And I did previously pair with this, so hopefully power's on. You saw the blue light LED flash. See the LEDs flashing away? And then you heard my phone actually automatically pair to it. And I'm just going to go to tune in radio and push play. This relationship developed between Adams and his police liaison officer, Detective Chief Inspector David Harris. And then I'm just looking at my phone now. I've got the Bluetooth icon here at the top. I don't know if you can see that. It's saying it's connected. Now, if I push the power button off, what happens on the phone? Da, 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 da. Still waiting for that icon. And now the Bluetooth has gone off. So that's absolutely perfect. That's exactly the functionality I wanted uh, versus the original uh, semi solution. Now, we might as well spend the last few moments together tidying up this because you've got to be a little bit careful with all these things. You don't want them flopping around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some adhesive here, an adhesive pad on the bottom of this module. Nice and simple like that. And I'm going to tuck it in the top of the, the chassis out of the way. I'm really quite pleased actually with this. This went really well. And uh, luckily I had those transistors on hand to be able to do what I needed to do. With, you know, so I could make it switchable because that would have been annoying if it wasn't sorted so it would just be on all the time uh, there would be no advantage over the original solution with that and you can see it's nicely tucked up there um, I had the wires, um, I cut them appropriately so they weren't too long but you can see down here this solution is a little bit jury rigged of course the uh, outer part of the tran uh, transistor is the collector yeah, and that so it's it's on the actual varnish here. Um, oh, back up! Just pulled out the wire after I taped that in. Yeah, that's gonna be fun to get that back in. Um, so yeah, I've made sure it's not uh, shorting to ground because that'd be a big problem. Don't do not short that screw to ground if you if you can help it. Otherwise, uh, you'll be spending some time trying to debug that one. I should imagine. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get this power wire back in. I obviously didn't push it in properly. And I've made sure that the clips are totally obscured by this standoff here. That didn't take too long really to push that in. So now I've got some heat shrink. And I'm just going to disconnect this audio cable. So it's nice, at least we can disconnect some stuff to get a bit of clearance. And I'm going to push some heat shrink over this collector. Um, just that way we won't get any shorts. But really, realistically, you're unlikely to get many shorts here. But I don't know, it's, it seems a bit better, a bit less jury rigged. I know there's a lot of YouTube channels where they spend a lot of care over this stuff, but you know, I, I, I have to admit, I just, I just do what I think is practical for the real world application. I think once this is in, it's not going to go anywhere anyway. But at the same time, we don't want you to drop the radio and then have it short out up again just to fix that. So I'm going to get another bit of heat shrink, slightly bigger one now to go over that resistor. Now that resistor is a 4k, it's giving about 0.6 volts to the base. I think we're about right with that. You could you could probably use a bit of a smaller resistor to be honest, but it's what I just had to hand again. Whatever you've got to hand sometimes. And yeah, I could have just turned on the hot air blower, but it's noisy. Whereas this silent <laughs> jobs are good and that's all you have to do, isn't it? So last thing is just to look at these wires. If we want to put anything, any, any special consideration into laying them out? Probably not. I'm just looking to see if I've got any, any suitable tape, but if you really care, get a bit of masking, ta masking tape, insulation tape, whatever you've got. And, uh, it won't do any harm to just wallop those down somewhere. The downside being if your tape is of a, a low quality, there's always the chance that the tape itself will work its way loose and that will in, in turn um, dangle around and then put strain on the uh, connection that you're trying to save. So I'm just going to 
that's a bad job. Bad job done badly. There we go. Get a little bit of tape on those. It's a bit of, it's of a dog's dinner, to be honest with you, but so it will do the job. So anything that remains now is possibly just one last test. Let's do one last test now. So we're gonna want to put it back in the box. I can see the blue LED flashing. It would be nice if you were to see that blue LED, wouldn't it? And then you could hear that right away, just connecting. That is brilliant. I'm very pleased, very pleased with this solution. So let me just pop the lid on properly. And that's our Bush radio. I think probably everything we want, would ever want to do has been done to it. You turn it on, you see the iPod mode fire up on the screen, and then you hear it connect. I don't think you could get better than that. That is absolutely the performance I wanted it to, to have. Um, other than that, I think all I've got to do is just kick back and listen to it. Um, hopefully that's been of some use to you. If you're on the fence about upgrading an old radio, please don't be. Just get off that fence, go buy that module and shove it in anywhere you can. As ever, thanks for watching.